Good morning, Emmanuel. Another day in the presence of the Lord, where we come together to celebrate our glorious Saviour, Jesus, and remember the grace that does come to us through him. What privileged people we are to meet in the presence of God and to know his power with us overruling in our circumstances and sometimes they do get out of hand don't they but we put our trust in the Lord and he will bring us through triumphant gloriously victorious and at his appearing what joy when we enter into our blessed hope through eternal ages we're going to take a reading of the scriptures now from 1st Thessalonians chapter 5. 1st Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning how and when the Lord will return, when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write you, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying, everything is peaceful, will fall on them so suddenly, disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labour pains begin, and there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief, for you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night, so be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armour of faith and love, wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour his anger on us. Christ died for us, so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up, just as you are already doing. God will bless the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Now we turn to the Lord in prayer together. Glorious God and gracious Father, we thank you for this morning, this time when we can come together around your throne of grace, though separated by distance, close in fellowship and faith to you, our Saviour God. We thank you for your faithfulness to your servants and we bring our prayers today Lord for those who are in pain and discomfort within our fellowship, those who fa face health crises, those perhaps Lord to whom this lockdown is wearing hard and long. We pray Lord that you will supply grace the power of your Holy Spirit to raise people up, both in spirit and in body, to glorify you a name. We know that you are always with us, and we put our confident trust in you today, that in all things you will overrule, and that your will may be done amongst us, as it is in heaven, to the glory of your name. Amen. We've been looking these last weeks at this prospect of the final judgment, the great white throne judgment, where all of mankind will be judged according to their works. And we have been considering the recommendation, the exhortation of the Lord Jesus Christ that we should be ready for his return. And as we had in our reading this morning, we are not ignorant of these events. We are informed about them. We are expectant, though we don't know when they're going to happen. We know that it is going to happen. 
Because God is faithful to his word. That God keeps his promises. And that's what I want to focus on this morning and to emphasise is that God keeps his promises. Not like people who often forget the vows they make. Perhaps promises that they make in marriage. Promises that they make in other relationships or in industrial settings. Well, people break the rules where people forget their responsibilities and where people are turn away from the promises they have made. We are reminded that in that day of judgment, our life story will show whether or not we are children of God by the choices that we have made in life whether we are the children of God or the children of the devil. The difference will be seen in our lifestyle. And for us, who are children of God, us who profess Jesus Christ as our Saviour, our good works, our righteousness, will be a consequence of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and not in the works that we have done. The Gospel of John, chapter 3 and verse 16, remains true. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth, that means put their absolute dependence on him. Trust him and no one or nothing else for their salvation, whose confidence is in the sacrifice that he made for their sin, who believe the Holy Scriptures when it says that there is no other name under heaven given by which we can be saved but the name of Jesus. We read in Romans chapter 5 that we have been justified made right in God's sight by faith. And we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where now we stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. The Apostle Paul is reminding us that our standing before God, our acceptance by God, is on the basis of the sacrifice that Jesus has made and our confident trust in that alone, not in any works that we have done. Faith produces works once we have come to a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour. And the Holy Spirit given to us enables us to perform righteous acts in the sight of God. That we can do those things which are beneficial to people and which glorify God. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed us from all our sin. And as a consequence, we are acquitted. Our sins are forgiven us. God declares that there is no case against us. So already before that great judgment day, we have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that grace will abound towards us and that the record will show that we have been acquitted, that we have passed from death to life and that we are numbered amongst God's very own children. In Christ Jesus, our sin debt has been paid up in full, and we've been accepted by the Father, his children, in deed and truth. And God's Spirit is within us, making us fruitful in works of love. We have peace with God. 
What a wonderful, wonderful chapter this is in this book of Romans. The Apostle Paul writing to the Christians at Rome and explaining to them the joy, the glory of this gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That whilst the law has confirmed us all as exceedingly, exceedingly sinful in Christ Jesus, because of the sacrifice he made, our sins are forgiven. And the Apostle here reminds us that he who saved us in his death, forgiving our sin, rescuing us from the prospect of wrath and adverse judgments against ourselves, here we are, are assured that we have peace with God. We have come by faith to repentance, and that faith is the gift of God. He has given us the means by which we can be saved. All glory and honour to his wonderful name. We have a whole new relationship with the Father, born again of God's Spirit. Children of God, not in the future, but now. Eternal life is in our possession in Christ Jesus. The Apostle says, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. And so now we have joy in this confident trust in Jesus. Assurance, not fear, concerning the judgments which will come upon the people of earth. Our Father God has numbered us in his family, and he who gave his life to save us, who rose from the grave to justify us, will in his continuing life make intercessions for us and keep us to the day of his appearing. What assurance is in this word, this salvation which God has brought to us through Jesus? What comfort, what confidence we can have as we consider all these glorious things that God has laid in store for us when Jesus returns and when the eternal kingdom is established on a new heaven in a new heaven and on a new earth. God keeps his promises. He will keep them to you as to me. His love has no limit. And here the apostle is assuring us of this eternal love of God, which will be unchanging in the years of our pilgrimage here on earth, our journey from earth into eternity. God will be with us to help us in adverse circumstances. Paul says we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. You see, in all things in our lives, the circumstances that come with changing times, God works in and through them to develop us, to mature us, to make us stronger in our faith, more confident in his love and in the promises that he has made for us. Though troubles and trials may come in great number, God will be with us in us, in them, and will lead us through them bringing us to spiritual maturity as the Holy Spirit works in us God's great will and good pleasure. For we know that all things will work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purposes. I trust this morning you find that consolation, that peace, that assurance through the knowledge